It's Terry from D-Lab, and today I'm going to show you how to repair this Remco board that's popular in the Bendix built-in washing machines. These boards are obsolete, these relays fry, but I've got the answer for you. Alright, so here is your Remco control board, okay? And what we're going to look at here are these relays. There's two relays here, the 24 volt PC mount type. You can see this one here is one in the thermal meltdown, all right? So the complaint was is that this guy's washer was not cycling properly. So I'm absolutely sure the reason is is this relay is arc welded. So first we'll measure it, and then we're going to change it out. All right, looking at the relay, you can see the part number is E3206S. The stock one is a 24 volt relay rated at 10 amps on the contacts. If you look at the connections on this first one, you can see they've overheated. Now when you go to measure these, you're going to find there's kind of a plastic conformal coating and you're going to have to scrape that or you're not going to be able to measure the resistance across these contacts or the coil. So to measure the resistance, take an X-Acto knife and scrape off a little bit of that conformal coating that's on these contacts. And then you can throw a meter on here and you can see if the contacts have failed, which I'm sure they have. Alright, so let's buzz out our relay contacts and see if the one that we see is fried is really fried. First off, check your meter. Short your leads. You got about a tenth of an ohm. Lead resistance, that's fine. You see it open, you see it closed. Meter's working. Down to the relay. These are Form C relays. You got a common. Normally closed, normally open contact. So we're going to go over here to this relay here that's not so badly baked. Now here's the normally closed. If you look at the meter, you got about 0.1 ohms. Open, closed. So that one's okay. Let's check the baked relay. Here's the common to normally closed. You see about 10 meg ohms. So obviously the fried relay is fried. One thing I wanted to cover is this relay, this E3206S relay, is not available anymore. You're not going to be able to find it. So D-Lab did a little bit of research and I found this lovely NTE relay. And here's the part number. You can see it has the same specs. There's your part number, the R225D16-24. This relay is a drop-in replacement for the stock E-Series relay, all right? So here's one that's out of the package. So you can see the Form C relay contacts. This is your coil. Now what's nice about this relay is there's no internal flyback diode, so the polarity does not matter. You're not going to screw up putting this relay in here. You will notice that it is a little bit shorter than the stock relay, but the width and the pin configuration is identical. So to verify that your relay is working, just for the fun of it, I've connected a power supply. Set it 20 volts, and I've current limited it to where it's not going to blow this thing up if I hook it up wrong, all right? So we'll put the little positive there, and listen when I hit the negative. Relay's operating. So here's the relay desoldering process. One thing I can strongly recommend is don't try to heat these things up with your iron and rock the relay and try to pull it off the board. You're going to destroy the circuit board. So first off, set up your soldering iron to approximately 700 degrees. Clean the tip. And we're going to put a little bit of solder on the tip to wet it. And then we're going to re-clean it. And we're going to grab some Chemtronics solder wick. Don't use generic crap solder wick. Use Chemtronics. It has rosin built in and it will pull the solder right off the board. So here we go. Go to this first contact. Get your solder wick in there. Roll the wick. And that pin is desoldered. We're going to go through and do every one of these. I won't bore you with the details. So you can see the process though. Get it on there. Now in this case you see how the solder's not pulling? 
That's because the old solder's fried, so we're going to add some more solder to help the wick do its job. Same deal, be patient, roll the wick around the connection. You can see that it's actually kind of resoldered itself. It's because I put good solder on it. We're going to keep working on it with the wick until it pulls the solder away from the pin. The reason you want to use solder wick is it's actually heat sinking that pad at the same time it's pulling the solder, so it's not going to make the pad lift. So please, use solder wick. The old relays are pulled. Now here is the one that was up front that was baked on the front. If you look, he was also melted on the back. It's in pretty bad shape. Um, but unfortunately, this relay, the heat traveled down these pins, and it did hurt these two pads here on the circuit board. They're a little bit gray and pitted. Now the normally, or I should say the common contact here is fine, okay? But uh, these guys are a little bit baked. So when I get ready to solder on the new relay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape off this uh, conformal coating between this pad and the next component on the board. And I'm going to do the same over here. I'm going to kind of come back here a little bit remove some of that conformal coating and then when I solder in the relay I'm going to let the solder flow from here to there and from here back over this way a little bit just to strengthen up the pad. The first NTE relay is in place. I was able to push it right into the original holes. All right, now what I did is I did clean off the conformal coating between these pads and I extended this pad over a little bit. We're going to get some solder in there, let it flow right across like that, and that's going to strengthen these pads. These are only two that were actually hurt at all. So you see I just kind of did the bigger the glob, the better the job, people, right? Just took it across, get this baby soldered in, and you see I'm not keeping that iron on there long, all right? This isn't arc welding class, this is soldering. So get it in there, get the job done, get the tip off. Mission accomplished. The new NTEs are in place. They actually went on this thing just like they're made for it. Solder connections look good. This board is ready to go back in your washing machine. All right. Now let's take a look real quick here. Here's the two relays that I pulled out. Now this one's obviously French fried. There's no reason to even go any further on that. But I took the cover off the second one. And I don't know if you can see it, but if you look in there real close without losing our focus, this contact here is a little bit blue. So this guy was also starting to go warp drive. It was going to do the thermal meltdown, people. So it is a good idea to change both. So there you have it. Successful repair and a free tech tip from Terry at D-Lab. And if you happen to work at the NTE company and you saw this, you want to throw some money in my PayPal account, Shoot me an email, I'll tell you what that address is. Thanks for watching.